Today, AMD is gearing up for their Ryzen 9000 X3D release. The company basically lied in their new Ryzen benchmarks. AMD finally beat Nvidia's RTX 4090, but it's not what you think, and three GPUs in one AMD card. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, if you saw my recent video, you know that Club386 recently reported that one of their sources from the Computex show floor actually told them that AMD plans to launch the 9000X3D chips in September. Shortly after that, we actually got a report where AMD's Senior Technical Marketing Manager of Consumer Processors, Donnie Walagroski, actually stated that the new Ryzen 9000 chips won't beat the previous gen's X3D models in gaming. Now, like I said, when I discussed this video, that's really not that much of a surprise. It didn't win last time, so I don't really know why we should expect it to win this time, but what it does say is that their senior technical marketing manager of consumer processors is actually willing to admit this, and that tells me that the 9000X3D chips are likely coming soon. Well, we now have one more piece of the puzzle, potentially. As you can see right here, it says from WCCF Tech, AMD updates its Ryzen chipset driver with new 3D vCache optimizer ahead of Ryzen 9000 and 9000 X3D CPU launch. Basically, if we look down here, we can see that AMD released a new chipset driver, and in that, they actually released the 3D vCache Performance Optimizer. And what that means is that it at least looks like AMD is gearing up to release their next-gen X3D chips. This is more or less laying the groundwork for that. Now, it's not definitive or anything like that, but with these different reports, it's definitely looking like it more and more. But first, did you know that someone could have your data right now and you wouldn't even know it? And what I mean by your data is personal information that you may not want out there. Luckily, I've actually discovered a service that lets me take back my data. And they sponsored today's video. It's called Delete Me. And it's an online service that contacts data brokers and actually forces them to delete your data. I'm talking things like your address, phone numbers, and a lot more. If you don't already know, data brokers are the ones who make money off buying and selling your data. So these are the ones you want to stop. To top it off, Delete Me doesn't just delete your personal information online. They also monitor the site so anytime a new data broker gets your information, they start the removal process all over again. That way you know you're protected. So take control of your data today by visiting joindeleteme.com slash meld. And when you use the promo code MELD in all caps at checkout, you'll get 20% off your Delete Me US consumer plan. Once again, that's joindeleteme.com slash meld and use code MELD. And next up for today, there's something that I've got to discuss. I've talked about how multiple times in the past, Intel has shared very misleading benchmarks, claims, things like that, especially during their presentations. Well, you better believe that when AMD does it, I'm going to talk about that as well. And here it Definitely looks like they have. This story, I will say, originally comes from a new video from Hardware Unboxed, and basically what they did was they went through and they noticed these benchmarks right here. You can see the 5900 XT extremely close at the 13700K, and the 5800 XT very close. I mean, these are technically beating the 13,600 KF. Well, this one shows it effectively beating it as well. And that actually rubbed hardware unboxed the wrong way. And the reason why is because the 5900 XT is basically a slightly cut down version of the 5950X. Then the 5800 XT is just slightly better than the 5700X. So we more or less know the performance that we should expect. And according to Hardware Unboxed, the 13700K is actually 36% faster than the 5950X across an average of 12 games, while the 13600K was 28% faster than the 5700X, meaning that these benchmarks really don't seem right. Well, we found out why. If you go down at the end of all of this, you can see here, this is the EndNote R5K132, and this one is R5K131. Well, when we look at this, you can see 
131. Testing as of April 2024, this is the 5900 XT, then 132 is the 5800 XT, and both of these systems use an RX 6600 GPU, meaning that they're using a very low-end graphics card here. And that is why these performance of both of these are so similar. Simply put, when you're doing CPU benchmarks, and pretty much everyone knows this, you want to use the best GPU that you can, and the reason why is so you can remove the GPU bottleneck. But when you use a very low-end card like the RX 6600, it's not going to show the actual difference in CPU processing power. It's also why you see a lot of times the CPU benchmarks that they use 1080p, and that's because when you have to push out more pixels, there's a higher chance that the GPU becomes the bottleneck and not the CPU. Basically, this tells us nothing. This would make almost any CPU right on par with the 13600KF or really any of these CPUs because they're all able to keep up with such a low-end RA 6600. Now, you might be thinking, oh, well, given the 9000 series is coming, these are essentially two generations behind at this point, so maybe they were just wanting to pair it with a GPU that, if you were to purchase this, you're more likely to get. But the issue with that is that it's pretty much completely pointless. They could have compared this with pretty much anything, but they chose these CPUs to try and say, hey, it's actually doing really good against more expensive processors. But let's say that you were to purchase this when the 5000 series came out. That mid-range GPU is going to be significantly better than the RX 6600, so then all of a sudden this is completely worthless, especially if you played any older games or anything like that. The simple fact is that this benchmark is absolutely absurd and AMD needs to fix it. And next up for today, I have a very interesting new story. For those who don't know, AMD announced their MI300 series processors a little while back. And you have the MI300A, which is basically an APU, it's a CPU and GPU built into one, but then you have the MI300X, and this is made to purely be a GPU, specifically made for AI. And that's what makes this next story very interesting. Believe it or not, the MI300X was actually tested in OpenCL just recently, and it got an unbelievable score of 379,660. The reason this is so wild is because it completely takes the lead over everything. You can see that AMD's new GPU actually beats NVIDIA's RTX 4090. Now, before you say it, I know a ton of you are already writing in the comments right now. I understand that the MI300X is like 10 times the price of the RTX 4090. This is an absolute absurd comparison, but it is pretty interesting just because it's not at all made for this type of compute. Simply put, this is way more of a consumer oriented benchmark and it's just really wild to see it completely take the lead. For example, Nvidia's H100 actually loses to the 4090. So it really doesn't mean anything as far as price and I'm 100% not saying that you should take this and try to play games with it or anything like that. It will almost certainly never get the drivers for it or anything. Some of you likely won't even be able to play games with it, but like I said, this is just really interesting and it's wild that AMD finally beats NVIDIA's 4090. And lastly for today, AMD may actually do it for real with this new patent. As you can see right down here, the story comes from Tom's Hardware. AMD actually released a very wild patent. Believe it or not, this goes all the way back to December 8, 2022. Now, you might be thinking, oh, well, that's way too long ago. It's already passed anyway. They're not going to do anything with it. But don't forget how long it takes to make a GPU. And given all the stuff that we're hearing about AMD's RX 9000 series, I actually wouldn't really be all that surprised if they did something like this. As you can see right here, this is actually what the abstract description is. It's a graphics card processing unit of a processing system that's partitioned into multi dies. And you might be thinking, oh, well, that's RDNA 3. No, if you didn't know, RDNA 3 technically only has one actual graphics processing unit, the GCD. The part that makes it an MCM or multi-chip module is the fact that the memory caches are on their own dies. The actual GCD though is all on one die, but this takes the GCD and splits it up into upwards of 
3. With that said, it does get a little wild here. As you can see, it says that it's made to interface with an application as a single GPU in a first mode and multiple GPUs in a second mode. Now, maybe that single GPU is what they're actually working on for gaming GPUs. Of course, one of the main problems when it comes to multi-chip GPUs is going to be the interconnect. AMD would have to make their Infinity Fabric significantly faster to where they could actually communicate back and forth each chiplet back and forth to where the operating system could actually look at it as a single GPU without a ton of latency. Well, maybe they have figured something out just because, like I said, once again, this is supposed to look like a single GPU. All in all, this is looking like some really interesting and exciting stuff, and it could mean that AMD is set to crush NVIDIA, well, likely not with their next gen, but with the generation after that. Fingers crossed. So while that does it for today, do you think AMD's RX 9000 will finally put the company at the top of the stack, or will NVIDIA win again? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to protect your data with Delete Me down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.